Joining us live now to talk about the reinforcement of this weekend's curfew is the Attorney General and Minister of Legal Affairs, Mr. Dale Marshall. Good evening to you. Good evening, Lisa. And uh, the curfew weekend has started. Our, our national stay-at-home weekend mm -hmm. has started. Mm -hmm. um, I'd just like to take the opportunity to reinforce the Barbadians that we are looking forward to receiving their fullest cooperation. Um, we've, we've been here before, uh, and so this is not new, uh, but we have made a determination that it was important so as to be able to even further arrest the spread of COVID, to force Barbadians really into staying put for the next two days. Um, and we've done this in the way in which we've dealt with it previously. We, we've made some changes to our directive. And the questions have, have come in. People are asking, what are you allowed to do? Uh, so let me take the opportunity to remind Barbadians, beaches are closed, mm -hmm. parks are closed, no exercise, at least not on the outdoors. You can exercise outside of your property, but you're jogging on the street, those kinds of things. Um, that's not going to be an option uh, for Saturday and Sunday. I'd like to warn everyone that during this weekend, the law enforcement personnel are going to be extraordinarily vigilant. They're always vigilant, uh, but given the, the seriousness of the situation and given our determination that this weekend will be a quiet weekend for Barbadians, uh, they're going to be taking their business very seriously. Uh, yesterday, the Commissioner of Police reinforced that. The police officers in Barbados are going to be firm. The COVID unit is going to be firm and we are really going to be having a zero tolerance approach. Um, but we accept that Barbadians still have to have opportunities to do a few things. They have to be able to seek medical attention if they need to. If they need medication, they have to be able to, to access that medication. Those people who are in the essential services, they still have to be able to, to go to work and things of that sort. Um, during the course of this weekend, uh, some vaccination centers are going to be open and we are making provision for those individuals who have appointments to go to those vaccination centers. Uh, but other than that, Barbadians are not going to be able to leave their homes to show up at vaccination centers uh, to stand in a line. That's simply not on. Um, so we, we have, I believe the number is 10 vaccination centers that have been stood up for the next two days. Um, but only if you have an appointment. I think that Dr. Yeah. Ferdinand is going to be reinforcing that. But I think it's important because we've made that particular stipulation in our directive uh, that persons directly involved in COVID-19 vaccination exercise, either as a, a worker, a provider, a doctor, a nurse, those kind of individuals, or a person who has an appointment, only then will you be able to, to go to a vaccination center. Um, we look forward to Barbadians' cooperation. Uh, as I said, we've been here before uh, from the discussion that we've had with individuals and certainly from your news story earlier. I think Barbadians recognize the significance of what we're doing. And they, with that kind of spirit, I think that we'll emerge from this weekend in a much better place. Now, during yesterday's media update, you said expressly that you must apply for emergency passes. However, some people have been having some challenges, especially those that need to take care of other people. Yes. Uh, well, we have been issuing passes. I think that what has happened is that Barbadians have now waited until, until yesterday to stand up and recognize that they need to have passes in order to be able to, to do certain things. A question, though, has come, has come up. People who are, are working in the ordinary course of things, do they have to have a pass? Now, our directive says that you are entitled to do certain things. So if, for example, you are at a medical office, if you're working in a medical office, uh, you are entitled to go to work. Uh, you're expected to go to work. If you have to get medical attention, you're expected to, to go for medical attention. So we're not going to hold up those kinds of things in order to be able to say to people, you know, you have to get a pass first. The notion of having to get a pass before you can go to a doctor mm. is quite patently absurd. Uh, but the fact is, if you are found on the streets and the members of the Royal Barbados Police Force stop you, you're going to have to explain to them why you are outdoors. What is your business? 
If you're able to establish satisfactorily that you are engaged in one of those limited things that are allowed for Saturday and Sunday, um, if you're working at a bakery, and let me remind you, bakeries are being permitted to bake bread for sale from Monday. But those Barbadians who have in their minds that you can go and buy bread tomorrow and, and Sunday, that's not on. But if you're working in a bakery, if you're working in a cleaning business, um, if you're working in a hotel or a villa, yes, you can go to work. And yes, you will have the opportunity to, to say to a police officer who stops you that this is what you're doing. Um, but the fact is that there isn't always the opportunity to investigate every excuse. And therefore, to the extent that it is possible, we ask that you have a pass so that if you have an encounter with the members of the Royal Barbados Police Force, you can simply show them your pass and then you can go on your way. Um, we are still issuing passes. There's been no stop. Uh, I can say that over the last 24 hours, there has been a significant swelling of the numbers of people who are, who are applying for passes. And that process will be dealt with. We are going to be granting passes uh, tonight. Um, I anticipate that there will be some fall off over the course of the weekend. Uh, but you still have the opportunity to apply for passes. Caregivers are, are, they are, they are an especially sensitive group because often they are serving their clientele during the night. And therefore, they have to be on the road. And it is obvious that after 7 o'clock, the members of the police force are going to be especially vigilant. So that particular segment of our population, those who are caregivers, they are especially encouraged uh, to, to apply for passes. Now, the current directive number four runs yes. until the 28th. However, yes, you just mentioned this weekend as a stop weekend, a stay-at-home weekend. What happens next weekend? Is this a test run? We, well, it's not a test run, and I, I don't think that we are we are there yet to make a determination of what will happen next weekend. Um, the Minister of Health, uh, supported fully by the Cabinet and fully by his, his uh, medical personnel, have determined that this is what we're going to do for this weekend. Uh, over the course, early in next week, I, I dare say, uh, they will have an opportunity to reflect on whether our numbers are falling and so on. And if things are looking positive, there is the possibility there is a possibility that next weekend may be subject to the same restrictions or it may not. But that is going to be an informed decision based on the analysis of the data in the early part of next week, uh, based on how Barbadians conduct themselves this week. So we're not projecting a stay home weekend next weekend. That decision will be made if required during the course of next week. But at this time, uh, we want Barbadians to focus on what is immediately ahead of us and not what may or may not come. Attorney General, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you very thank much. Thank you.